Sean Hannity lives in a gilded cage. He does. An ivory tower. He flies on private jets, makes tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars a year propagandizing nonsense to the American people. From his gilded cage, he very rarely encounters reality. It is whatever he wishes it to be on his show. But all of that crashed into a hard brick wall when he sat down with California Governor Gavin Newsom. Let's watch a clip. 71% of I the GDP in America are in blue counties. I would 71% of the GDP well, in America are blue centers. counties. Progressive policies. Okay, that are paying high taxes. And 71% of the country's wealth. Seven of the top 10 dependent states Let's say are your you're states. Right. Let's say you No, been. we're subsidizing your states, Let's, Sean. You, now, Governor Newsom is an exceptional spokesperson for American values. But he said something here that deserves correction. He looks at Sean Hannity and he says something that is correct economically, that the red states, Mississippi, Alabama, those states are dependent states, meaning that they require subsidies from the wealthier blue states, like California, New York, and New Jersey. But Gavin Newsom falls into a trap that he is better than here. He refers to those states to Sean Hannity as your states. They're not Sean Hannity states any more than California, New York, or our states, or Gavin Newsom states. We have 50 states in this country. They are American states, all of them, from Alabama to Alaska, from the first state, Delaware, to the last state, Hawaii. Each state contains Americans our countrymen and women. There are no your states and our states. This is the trap that Donald Trump has set for all of us. And at times, we all walk into it. The division game is Trump's game. It's Hannity's game. It's Tucker Carlson's game. It presumes that we have no national identity. A president once said, there are no red states. There are no blue states. Just the United States. That's how we should talk about the country. Finally, the dam is starting to crack. The truth is starting to seep out. Even the corrupt former Attorney General of the United States, William Barr, a Trump sycophant of the First Order, a man who trampled the rule of law has recently gotten religion. The fact of the matter is, uh, he is a consummate narcissist, and he constantly engages in reckless conduct that that puts uh, his political followers at risk and, and, and the conservative and Republican agenda at risk. Would he put the country at risk if he was in the White House again? He, he will always put his own interests and gratifying his own ego ahead of everything else, including the country's interests. There's no question about it. This is a perfect example of that. He's like, you know, he's like a nine year old, a defiant nine year old kid who's always pushing the glass toward the edge of the table, defying his parents to stop him from doing it. And of course, let's watch Chris Christie. Republicans should listen to what he says. He's a petulant child when someone disagrees with him. And whether it's Bill Barr or John Kelly or General Mattis, whether it is Mick Mulvaney or whether it's, excuse me, General Milley, um, if you disagree with Donald Trump, the petulant child comes out and he calls you names like the ones you just mentioned and the ones I mentioned. Chris Christie's becoming an important player in the 2024 presidential race. Let's talk politics for a second. The punditocracy in Washington, D.C., which is almost always strong, has written off Chris Christie. The truth of the matter is, every Republican candidate is damaged. Every Republican candidate carries the heavy baggage of hypocrisy and accommodation from the Trump years. Every single one of them. But the truth is this. And it's an adult truth, a pragmatic reality. We don't live in a perfect world. The candidate who will put Donald Trump into permanent retirement before his likely 
prison sentence is on the playing field already. That means it's either Mickey Haley or Mike Pence or Asa Hutchinson or Chris Christie or the mayor of Miami. Now, Mike Pence and Nikki Haley are absurd candidates, and both of them will get no traction in this race whatsoever. They're stuck in a political state that could best be described as just above vegetative coma. Now, Chris Christie's actually moving in the polls. He's starting to come up. Why? Well, Chris Christie out of that field is by far the most talented candidate. He's the most quick-witted. He's the funniest. He's the smoothest. And he's the best in a row. The Trump era is coming to an end, one way or another. Today, Donald Trump, according to the polls, remains the overwhelming frontrunner. But the polls also indicate this country does not want a rematch between President Biden and Donald Trump. They don't view it as inevitable. The American people view it as catastrophic. The American people want to start moving forward again. And the way you know that is true is because some of the most cowardly and opportunistic politicians that have ever been, people like Mike Pence, people like Nikki Haley, are suddenly and startlingly doing like Bill Barr is doing, telling the truth. Now, the person in the Republican race who got there first was Chris Christie. He was the first guy off the landing craft, so to speak. He was the first guy on the ground. He was the first guy to bring it to Trump and proverbially knock him on his ass. Chris Christie has the talent to keep doing so. And here's the thing about the MAGA race in the months ahead. There's no drama around Donald Trump anymore. He's a chaotic, catastrophic figure. He is a real-life Nora Desmond, decomposing, decaying in front of our eyes, shunned even by his corrupt family. Where's Ivanka? Where's Jared? They're all gone, just like Trump's ratings. Oof, gone. But when it comes to the debate, there will be drama. What is the drama? The drama is the long overdue confrontation between Chris Christie and Donald Trump. Chris Christie used his considerable talents to take out little Marco in 2016. It was brutal. It was funny. But it was junior varsity. Chris Christie had a chance to become the Republican nominee in 2012. There was a moment, had he gotten into the race, he would have walked to the nomination. Timing is an underappreciated virtue in presidential politics, though. By 2016, it was too late, and he was under the wave. But by 20, Chris Christie's had an experience that he hasn't had before. When he ran last time, he hadn't yet been defeated as a presidential candidate. He had been a guy who had thought about it and passed, a guy who got into it and crashed. This time, Chris Christie understands his only play is telling the truth. His only chance is being a man of conviction and integrity. He'll have to explain why he walked away and off of that path between 2015 in 2023. But he's back on it now. We live in an imperfect world full of fallen people. And that includes all of our politicians. This is the wrong business to look for saints in. It's a sinner's business. And it's sinners who will lead us out of this catastrophe. People like Chris Christie, who supported Donald Trump, will be critical in ending Donald Trump as a political force in this country. 
That is why everybody, regardless of party, should be cheering for anybody who confronts Donald Trump effectively inside the MAGA Republican primary, because that is the place where Donald Trump will be bloody, where Donald Trump will be laid low, where Donald Trump will be finally, at long last, defeated. There is nothing that could conceivably be more irresponsible and more reckless than the position of the Biden campaign which is hoping that Donald Trump beats Chris Christie and all of the other candidates in the Republican field because, in the estimation of the Biden campaign, Trump is easy prey for Biden, which, by the way, isn't true. Anybody who thinks that Donald Trump can't beat Joe Biden in the rematch is smoking dope. It's dangerous to wish that Donald Trump be one of the final two people in the presidential race. It's dangerous to wish that Donald Trump would be the nominee of one of the two major parties in a two-party system. It's as reckless as it gets. The hour has come in the United States to move on, to put this era down, to end it. It is an era of ignominy, of rancidity. It is an awful era in the story of America's glory. Generations from now, people will look back on this moment in time as among the smallest and least worthy in all of the history of the United States. And our descendants will wonder, how could it have been that such an unworthy liar as Donald Trump took political power for a brief moment in the United States? How is it that so many millions became so disillusioned by the political system, by the concept of government of the people, by the people, for the people, that they would elevate because they are dissatisfied? The worst of the people to the leadership of all of the people. What that man did when he got there was divide us so badly that seven years on, when one of the most articulate politicians in the country faces one of the most articulate liars, the conversation quickly devolves into your states and our states. That is Trump's legacy. And it is our opportunity, our opportunity to heal the breach, to move on to a better place, to build a better country, one that repudiates the smallness of Donald Trump, his cronies, and this awful moment in the American story. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our Warning Premium community. You can find out more in the description below.